All right, welcome back. Hopefully everything went well with the Sokotoa and the right angle triangles and all the grade 10 trigonometry that you're reviewing. Now we get started with grade 11 and the first thing we want to talk about is angles and standard position because angles do have a standard position. Trigonometry, my friends, actually doesn't come from triangles. It comes from the triangles formed within a circle. And we're going to talk about that in later, later lessons. But right now I want to talk about how to draw an official angle, so to speak, for lack of a better term. Angles are drawn from the origin onto the x-axis. And so in this case, where you see this word initial, initial side, this arm, let me just erase that, this arm right here is called the initial side or the initial arm. Okay, right there is called the initial arm. It is always located from the origin, right here, and then travels along the x-axis. That is where every angle starts, if it's a standard position. Then angles are swung either counterclockwise, which is what happens 90% of the time. These are called positive angles. And then wherever your angle stops, right here in this case that's called your terminal side terminal arm it's the word terminal means where something stops and then the angle is simply as measured from that point so you could have acute angles like this one you could have obtuse angles like the one in the diagram here and you can even have what they call reflex angles which start here at the x-axis and go below and so that would be called a reflex angle all right, and so when we're dealing with angles, we have to keep these things in mind. Every angle's got an initial arm, it's got a terminal arm, and angles in standard position all start with the initial arm on the x-axis, all right, with the vertex of that being at the origin. So if I was going to draw this, well, let's say that was my y-axis and my x-axis would be here. That would be a standard or an angle in standard position. Okay. All right. So here's a, here's a diagram that indicates those exact same things. These are all standard angles in standard position because they start at the vertex or the vertex, sorry, of the angle is located at the origin of the x and the y coordinate. Their initial arm all starts on the positive x axis. And then their terminal arm, this one is in quadrant one, which everything is going to be today, and we'll talk about that in a minute. There's an obtuse angle, which ends up being in quadrant two. And then this reflex angle, which is below the x axis, which is more than 180 degrees, is in quadrant three. Now, speaking of quadrants, because I've got an X and a Y axis, I have what we call four different separate quadrants. This is quadrant one. And, and for today's lesson, that's all we're going to be dealing with is quadrant one. This is quadrant two. This is quadrant three. And this is quadrant four. My Roman numerals suck. So those are the four quadrants around a circle. Okay. This being any angle can be from 0 to 360 degrees. So now we're dealing with stuff beyond just elementary triangles and obtuse angles and acute angles. Now we're dealing with angles that could go 360 degrees. Okay? So the first thing we have to do is take a look at these kind of questions. What we're doing is we're taking a look at an angle in standard position. And the question says the point four and seven. And that's what P stands for. P just simply stands for the point at this coordinate. That's what the P47 is. So the point at the coordinate four and seven, which we'd find down here, is on the terminal arm, the terminal arm being that one, <coughs> excuse me, of an angle theta in standard position. Well, it is in standard position because the initial arm is located on the positive x-axis. So to determine the distance r from the origin to p, well we would call that 
in the old days, the hypotenuse. So now we're going to call it R because eventually R is going to stand for radius when we start dealing with things around the circle. Okay. So if I take a look at this, the first thing you can do or should do, and let me just check what I'm going to do here. Am I going to go to the next page yet? Nope. The first thing we want to do is this, is you want to draw the diagram. And I know some of you think that's too much time. That's a load of crap. You have to draw the diagram because it's easier when you see it. So if I draw this like they've got, I would just draw my X coordinate, my X and my Y coordinate, sketch something about where 4 and 7 is, and I would draw that line there. This is R. And then I know that because this is at 4 and 7, this distance here is 7 units. And this distance here is 4 units. So what I've created is in fact a right angle triangle. So the first thing they want me to do is determine the distance from the origin to P. They want me to find this right there. Okay, this thing here is what they want me to find. So how do I do it? Well, it's just a right angle triangle. I mean, we've got right angle triangles. Anytime you've got right angle triangles, it's just A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And so in this case, it's going to be 4 squared plus 7 squared equals R squared. So I'm going to get 16 plus 49 equals R squared. 65 equals R squared. So R is going to equal what you would be, have been trained to say is plus or minus six, root 65. But, oh, that's supposed to be a 5. When we're dealing with R, in this case, this distance from there to there, we're dealing with a distance. And distance, distances cannot be negative. So we ignore the minus, and R is always a positive number. Okay? So figuring out A, A we found to be R equals the square root of 65. Now we're going to take that, that information and we're going to apply it to part B. It says determine the primary trigonomic ratios of theta. So of this angle right here, what are the ratios? Well, I mean, that's, that's simple enough. Sine of theta would simply be opposite over hypotenuse. In this case, the opposite side is 7. And the hypotenuse, or R now, is root 65. That's all they're looking for. The cos of theta would be the adjacent side, which is 4 over the hypotenuse, or in this case R, which is root 65. And then the tangent would be opposite over hypotenuse, or opposite over adjacent, which is 7 over 4. So there's B. Okay? That's easy enough. Determine the measurement uh, or the measure of theta to the nearest degree. So now they want you to actually solve that. And if I'm solving this, I'd simply use any one of those, just like I normally would. All right? So I'm going to use randomly pick tangent. I think that's actually the one they used in the book, too, if you can check. And you're going to find this question. I mean, this is in your work text. It's on page 428. And so I would simply go the tangent of theta. Let's do this in yellow. Tangent of theta equals 7 over 4. So when I figure that out, that's at 1.75. So then theta would equal tangent to the negative 1 of 7 divided by 4. And that gives me an angle of 60 degrees, like so. So we figured out the three. This is 60 degrees. We've figured out those three answers by simply using the properties of Sokotoa on the x and the y coordinate. And that's all we've really done here. So then we're going to take the not information or that. And again, what I want you to do right now is I want you to answer question one on the left side of that book under check your understanding. There's a question there, the point three and four. So do that. This would be a good place to hit pause so you can work on the question and then go to the next step because the next step just takes this information and goes one, one step further, applying it to word problems. So now would be a good time to hit pause. Here is the second example, and you'll find 
this on page 429, and it just says an aircraft has an emergency landing 200 kilometers from an airport. So there's it's a word problem. It was heading 50 degrees north, east 50 degrees north, which means it was going east and north. Well, that's not really good on blue. But you get the idea. It was going east and then north, so 50 degrees. And a rescue team has to travel to get there. To the nearest kilometer, how far should the team travel in each direction? Okay. Well, we know, and I'm just going to draw this, that if this is my X and my Y, the plane took off 50 degrees in that direction. And I know it traveled, 50 degrees. And I know it traveled 200 kilometers. So there it is, right there. So what they're asking me to solve or find is that distance east and then this distance north. Okay. Well, I mean, that's just basic trigonometry. We're just doing Sokotoa in a word problem off an X and Y axis. Because if I know this is 200, then I simply say the cos of, see, if I'm trying to find this, it's the adjacent side to 50. I'm going to say the cos of 50 is adjacent, and let's call it X over 200. So then X is going to equal 200 times the cos of 50, and that gives me an answer of, where do I have that, 128.6 kilometers. All right, so there's how I find this distance. This distance right here would be, let's just mark that, 128.6. All right, and then to find the north, I'm just going to do the same thing, just basic Sokotoa, except now I'm using the opposite side to 50, which would be the sine function. So sine of 50 would equal, uh, let's call it y, over opposite over hypotenuse. And again, when I do the math, I'm going to get y equals 200 times sine of 50, and then y would equal, and I have 153.2 kilometers. So this distance is 153.2 kilometers. And I've answered the question. They want to know to the nearest kilometer how far. So I guess I should round this off to to be technically correct, 153 and 129. Okay, so there's a word problem. I drew the X and the Y axis, and I used the information in the word problem, and I started my initial angle at the origin right there. Okay, so here's, I guess I could have done over here. Here's the question, here's the solution in the book. They've drawn it 200 kilometers. They've drawn an angle of 50, and then they solved those two distances there just by using Sokotoa. Okay, nothing anybody in this room can't do. So again, I want you to do the question on the right-hand side of the page, to check the understanding, which is number two. Again, this would be a good place to stop the video or pause the video, finish it so, you have, so that you know you've got a grasp of what's going on. Ask somebody who doesn't. Uh, Mrs. Fickert is very good at this stuff, so she can help you with this as well. And then work on that assignment out of the work text. Okay, so we're going to do page 430, 431, numbers 3, 4, 7, 8, and 11. All right, and that's the end of this particular section, and that should keep you busy for a little while. And good luck with that. And again, if you're having trouble, ask Mrs. Fickert, ask a buddy, ask me, send me a text.